Oh, I wish the builders wouldn't have wasted. <laughs> Welcome to our weekly look back at the Gabby Super Value Kerry Senior Hurling Championship and a look forward to the weekend fixtures. Now, in this uh, particular program, we will look back at the last round, round three of uh, the uh, fixtures. And uh, we had games on the Thursday night uh, when Kilmiley beat Dr. Croaks. On Friday night, we did double header, um, and that involved uh, Causeway. Um, we're out in Abidoni playing St. Brendan's. And uh, of course, we had Crata against a very young Bally Duff side here in the Ossenstack Park. And then on Saturday, we had one of the games of the weekends and one of the performances of the weekend some cracking goals in the Abbey Dorney and Lixa game. And it also saw the return in the second half of a maestro. Now, uh, with me this evening to discuss all such matters, I have our usual panel. Um, and I'll introduce you again in case you're tuning in for the first time. Uh, right next to me here is the man from Tarbert. As I said, not a stronghold of hurling, but at the same time, we had a young Tarbert uh, uh, native with a father playing with Belly Duff, uh, was it? And, uh, and uh, he, he, uh, he played very well on, uh, on Friday evening. John O'Dowd, he's a freelance reporter uh, and journalist with the Kerryman um, uh, Eden, among other organisations. Um, and um, he writes about hurling commentates as well. Now, next to him, we have the one and only James McCarthy. Now, James has been described as a maverick, which is unfair to mavericks. Uh, but, <laughs> he, he, <laughs> yeah, uh, he was a savage hurler, as I said previously. Excellent, played for Kerry for many a year. Uh, at least he was on the pitch. And uh, he also has eight senior hurling championship medals uh, with uh, Kerry. Uh, with uh, Kilmiley, but it's still not beat. He still doesn't beat Ian Brick uh, because he doesn't play cricket. Now, our third member of the panel is Aidan Leahy from <coughs> Abidorney. Aidan, one of the young guns in the Abidorney club. Um, he is banking in Abidorney, possibly winning the championship this year. Uh, but um, he was very happy with their weekend performance in the first half. But in the second half, I must say, uh, he was uttering obscenities as he left the, uh, the field. So, yeah, there are three um, wise men. And we're looking forward to some of their analysis and some of their thoughts on the games uh, that happened and the games that will happen. So we're going to kick on. Um, we're under pressure this evening. And our first game uh, that we look at is the game that happened on Thursday night. It happened in Dr. Croaks and it involved Kilmiley versus Dr. Croaks. Change strip of uh, mainly, mainly gold and, and the green sash in the front as Daniel Collins is going to get us started here with his first score of the match. Yeah, and that's one of the things we were missing from Field in the search of Brian O'Connor. And O'Connor has it on the far side there. He's going to shoot off his left. And he's going to send it over the bar. In fact, I think it might have been Tom Doyle who came out to win that puck out. That's an absolutely brilliant score by Doyle. Yeah, cut. Either. Falls eventually inside here. Moran again with the run of Phil Mansell inside him. Phil has it now. Phil with a chance. Bearing down a goal. Has support inside. Phil goes himself. A fantastic finish to the roof of the net by Phil Mansell. 1-1 one, one in the first two minutes. Yeah, he's actually flying. He got the ball off Milan there. He only had one. Uh, two minutes, 45 seconds. Fantastic puck out this time. Straight into the hand. Primary possession. One there going through was Willie Allen. Allen's still going. Looking for a pass to Tom Doyle here. T Doyle has a point already. Turns to shoot. Looking for another. Pull on the ground and saved by John B. O'Halloran inside and goals. And for this, he has Nathaniel Dunsell with, uh, with him for company. Looks outside him here to Jordan Brick. Brick the captain. Ball in hand. Looks at the post. And is going to send this straight between them. Great score from Jordan Brick. Yeah, quality finish from Brick. And that all came from the goal chance from Crows. And a good save by John B. Because indeed condition. That they've been a senior championship to have his, you know, consistency on the freeze anytime they do get a chance. Oh, man. Like, it's what we need. Like, so. And another man who was a huge part of that is Tom Doyle, who sent over a monster score. Connor again. O'Connor sending it across field here into a bit of space to Jordan Brick. Brick. Bit of a dummy. 
and the shot goes straight between the posts for a very stylish score indeed from the captain. It was a great score, but I'm telling you, I'm not sure there was an English Daniel Collins again made it. In the middle of the field here is Tom Doyle again, and Doyle is hurling well this evening. He's Mark Heffernan on his shoulder, he's going to give it to Mark Heffernan. Heffernan is going to shoot from the pocket, and Mark yes, Heffernan, man. the two main men combining, working perfectly so far for Dr. Crokes. Look at it, it's 1-5 five to 5 points, and you know, O'Connor pops it outside here, ball dropped and a chance for Kilmiley to turn it over and clear their lines. Ronan Walsh battling back there. But away it comes Kevin Landers, who tries to knock it out again. Almost finds Heffernan, oh. but here finds Kieran O'Connor. O'Connor with a chance to run through and goal. Now O'Connor going through. The shot. Oh. Fantastic finish. Colm O'Cleave. Colm O'Cleave named at wing back, pushed into the forward line, pulled along the ground, and sent it into the back of the net. And no more. Well, Mark Heffernan is with him. O'Connor looking to switch it again here. It's Bobby O'Connor inside there, and O'Connor gets on the break here and pops it straight between the posts. And what is probably an important score for Kilmiley. I was going to say. So Collins with a ball inside here. Phil Mansell now on the turn here. Phil Mansell is going to look over the shoulder, strike off his right. Phil Mansell is going to send it over the bar. I was going to say a minute ago, Phil Mansell has gone quiet since the first five minutes of the game, but a lovely ball is on that part as well. Long ball here, well won by Ronan Walsh. Straight into the hand here now. Walsh on a bit of a run here. As the rain comes down on Lewis Road, Walsh is going to fire the shot straight over the bar. That's a great score, like Joe. When you need lead. Side here is Tom Doyle now. Doyle is going to go from distance. Tom Doyle is probably going to drop short. Can it be kept in on the far side there? Good battle being had. But it's going to go out to the left and wide for Dr. Crokes. Sixth wide of the half there. As Dunico Callahan blows the whistle for half time. <laughs> as well to make matters worse for him. He's going to make a bit of a, a loopy run here, but the ball is in the middle here now, and Dr. Croke's looking to get it out. A pull inside there by Connor Murphy, but he only found a Kilmiley man with it. And a lovely pass here to Jordan Brick, who found himself <laughs> a bit of space, and he sent it over the bar. Well, great vision by Polly O'Connor, because uh, Brick is actually looking for the pass out Daniel Collins, but he couldn't get it out to him. Played it back to Polly. Polly saw him all in here. That's cut out this time. But Paddy O'Connor is there to win the scraps. Paddy, looking up, is going to go for the shot himself here. Paddy O'Connor is going to send <coughs> it over the back. That's a great score, Paddy. Actually, thought when he looked up, the stick take by Tom Mornan. Mornan has the runner of Dara Nolan. Nolan now has another man inside him. Nolan will stay going himself this time. Gives the pass. Here is Daniel Collins. Collins goes for a goal. It's a good save by Quirk. Oh, Collins still has it again on the rebound. And it has just gone over the bar. I thought it actually went wide, but absolutely brilliant. Like it goes along again with the puck out here. Tom Doyle this time has it in the hand. He's a runner on the far side as well. If he can spot him, gives it inside to Brian O'Connor instead. O'Connor with the shot. And it's saved by John B. But it's going to come back for a free in. Go oh, we're going to bring it in for hitting the Nolan though. And he's the one who broke it down to Jordan Brick. Brick gives a fantastic hand pass here to who else but Paddy O'Connor. O'Connor is going to strike this over the bar. And I think you could nearly stop the end of the match competition now as well at this stage. I think about it a few minutes ago and it's like it's definitely, a second score as well. Definitely front running for it. Long one up the field here. Dougie Wait, Fitzgerald, Tom Doyle is underneath it. Tom Doyle has it in the hand here. He has a runner off his shoulder as well. Has the advantage as well. Pops it inside here. Chance for a goal. He pulls on the ground. <laughs> oh, to the right and wide. It's going to come back for the free in underneath it. Flicked on by Carroll. Looking now for O'Connor there. Brian O'Connor has it into the hand here now. Does he have any support? He's running in through. Oh, it's a good save by John O'Hanlon, who saw it fairly late as well. And eventually, Kimoyle are going to get a chance. It's fired across fields now, looking for Jordan Brick, who's been quieter in this second half. He had a great first half, but this time Brick has it and has sent it straight between the posts. And look at the great score from Jordan Brick. That's exactly what you want him to do. Coming from the loop, from the right hand side, moving towards. Get it going here. It's going to drop straight into the hand of Paddy O'Connor, who's caught out. No call. Strange for him to be caught out that time. Mark Heffernan now going through, has support inside here. Heffernan's going to go all the way himself, is he? Heffernan looking for the goal. John B. O'Halloran again is equal to it. And is eventually going to get... He's surprised he didn't get a free out there. Kilmoyley eventually dig it out. Oh, oh. Carter win in the second half for Kilmoyley. 11 wides and all for them. As Tom Doyle is going to shape up for a long distance effort here. And I would Great say score. has crept that in. Yeah. Over the bar for Tom Doyle, his third of the match. 
And that's the class man hands on the ball, bounce front and first touch up. He's going to send it down the middle here, but Davy Carroll is going to intercept here. Carroll pops it into Mark Heffernan. Heffernan loses his man here now and goes on the run. Darren Nolan comes to cover across here. Carroll again. Carroll goes for a shot and sends it over the bar. Yeah, a good play there now, fairness. Carroll intercept. Catch by him. Pushes away his own man out of his way as well here, going with the hur- with the ball and the hurley strikes it over the bar. Yeah, I was. I actually thought the referee put the whistle at his mouth. How are you going to call him for uh, steps again? Which would have been for the third time. But, no. but I think uh, special mention was to go to Mark Heffernan and Tom Doyle from Cross. I think they've been absolutely fantastic. Like, and they've really brought the battle to Kilmoyley tonight. But from a Kilmoyley point of view, yeah, Paddy O'Connor by far from start to finish got on so much ball. He's so economical. He chipped in a couple of scores as well. But it's his pass. Uh, because of the uh, funeral of uh, John Paul uh, Omani and uh, again uh, it was a very uh, sombre occasion uh, but well done to Dr Crokes they were contacted and within an hour uh, they had got back to Kilmiley Club and said no problem we played a game on Thursday night in Killarney and that's what happened now as it turned out it was quite a, a good game and uh, James McCarthy was there uh, watching his uh, his own team kill Miley. Uh, he was um, almost sleeping with the enemy, as it were, where he was with uh, a member of the Crokes or a former member of the Crokes team. So watching it, James, um, what was your overall? Obviously, it was emotional and very emotional yes. for for Kill Miley. There was a minute silence for John Paul, etc. Uh, but uh, once the game got going. Um, at no stage would you say that uh, Dr. Crokes were overawed by Kilmiley? No, no, in fairness, they had as much possession as Kilmiley did. Just, and when you look at that, then you wonder, I suppose the, the score at half time even reflected it. Was it was three or six points at half time? It was very close. Now, Kilmiley played in fits and starts, bits and pieces here and there, and a couple of scrappy bits. Like, but that's probably doing a disrespect to Crokes for how well they played without even one of their best players, Conor O'Hara. Yeah. Like you're thinking, like Mike Lennon was very good centre back, I thought, and so was Mark Heffernan and Tom Dodd. They were a the main threat. But like you yeah. have to look at that then, like you say, right, they're our main threat. Look after him. We didn't do our house our homework, like we didn't do we didn't yeah. we didn't go, go about ourselves properly at all. Yeah. Like if they're their main players, you've got to tag their main players. They yes. really are. Crocs of other players are on the field, yes, but not of that quality. Yeah. You really have to and the old saying goes hammer the hammer. hammer, no, we, the didn't. hammer. we did not hammer the hammer yeah. on the night. And we let Croke, we kept, we let him in the game for as long as possible. And the fairest, Dublin, they're all goal, he made some great saves. He made triple mm-hmm. great saves. They were in yeah. a few times. Brian O'Connor had a couple of great shots. I think Mac Mark Heffern had another shot. Yeah. They were, if they went in, I won't say we'd be in trouble, but the way we were playing, we were well winning ourselves, and you would have found it hard to get out of that second gear, to get another gear, to get moving again, to actually push the game over the line. Yeah. With the emotion, the night, I think, fellas, I don't know, was it, was it flat or what was it? We just did not really, like, that won't beat what's left in the championship. Yeah, it won't yeah. be what's left in the It won't. That's a fact. And that's but Crokes were very good on Ferguson. Crokes and at home, you're going to expect that at home. Crokes yeah. at home, historic occasion, over on Crokes pitch. Fair play to him. Great credit due to him for actually saying, "Right, yeah. we'll accommodate you. We'll play here. Come over and play the match." And every party was happy in, and fair play to him. And they stood up, which they should do. You'd expect yeah. that. There's, there's pride in Crokes hurling, and that's where these are shown. Every bit of them shown last Thursday night. Yeah. And they were as good at Kilmarney for long, long spells. Yeah. And we got a few scores here and there, maybe a little bit of quality up front, tour for us, but it's worrying a little bit for Kamali. But I think you know, we're kind of we had the funeral the weekend on Saturday, we had the burial on Saturday, maybe you know things maybe have settled a little bit now since, and you know we've kind of, I won't say we've done our grieving as such. We'll move on and and try and do our best for here on in, but. Yeah. You, you need a response. You need a response to Hornerfield. In any way, would you be worried that that's your third flat performance? Yeah. The league final against Crotter yeah. was great. I know he had the full strength team. He wasn't full strength against Bally High, but that was flat. Yeah. And now there was a good reason why the game against Crokes was probably flat and you could leave the, the lads off there with a, with a pass. But overall, the spark, the camaraderie, the traditional will to win and intensity of Kilmoyle doesn't seem to be there this no. year. No, it might come in in the quarterfinals, but it's not there so far. At the moment, like it, it's it's kind of like if we go really look at it on broad scale, it's been a flat season. We played at Abidoni and they should have beaten us in the league semi-final in our own pitch. Should have beaten mm-hmm. us. We got late goals when it takes over the line. That was that was the only difference. That was another performance. Abidoni had us for a long time there. 
Yeah. And there was other games during the season. We played a few games in the county league. We were beating a couple of games. Other games, was that true? We won them, yes. But it's been flat. It's, I don't know. Can't, can't explain it. Yeah. Maybe, fellas, we just need, we need something. Maybe some fella has to come in somewhere and grab it, the game or grab the whole situation by the scruff of the neck and say, right, I'm doing this. Like, I've seen, like, I'm nearly becoming a cause of sport now. Christ, that's, that's going to be hard to say. But <laughs> I've watched all the cause matches. Do you realise you'll have to move out to kill Miley? <laughs> but I've seen different fellas really take the mantle of the yeah. big lads. Like, they can replace Mirish and Jason, and you could hardly notice they're gone. That's a bad thing to say now. But you could hardly notice they were gone. You wouldn't notice they were gone against yeah. Stepper in this last night. Yeah. The way fellas stood up and you said, Jesus Christ, we Gary Carey full back. We'd know the fellow over there. Christ, they're all. Everyone of them just seemed to stand up. We're not doing it. Yeah. We're not getting 15 fellas standing up together. At the same time, we're yeah. not. Okay, no. I, for starts. one strange moment there, I thought you were going to suggest <laughs> you were going to make a comeback yourself. <laughs> you were going to be the missing link no, at, no. at 50 odd <laughs> summers or whatever you are. Aidan, um, yeah, you were commentating on that yeah. match. Now, I know you were commenting on, on Kilmiley, but maybe maybe on Croaks. Like, I thought Nathaniel Dan still had a very good game. I thought Damon Quirk, his time in with the Kerry team, certainly he made a couple of good saves as well, to be fair to him. Yeah. And the names that already ha have been have been spoken by, by James. So, overall, and Tom Dyle came out of that game really looking like yeah. a quality hurler. I think it's, it, it's probably, it works both ways with both teams. Huge credit to Dr. Croaks and probably a massive disappointment to Kilmoyley is that I think Phil Mansell had 1-1 scored inside the first 90 seconds. Kilmoyley didn't kick on, but Croaks didn't throw in the towel, whereas years gone by, that's Kilmoyley nearly already Roll it over, over it? and yeah. done with, with 59 minutes to go and the other team thrown in the towel. Croaks didn't throw in the towel, but Kilmoyley weren't able to press on from that. And kind of, I suppose, Phil himself then didn't really kick on and it was kind of the sign of the rest of the team not kicking on. It was a great goal, to be fair, to McCork had no chance with that. Um, but like that, they they had a spell in the first half where the puckouts really started falling apart for them. Kilmoyle were winning everything in the half-back line, but they kept on going with it, and eventually they started winning ball. Tom Doyle was nearly winning every puckout. They went towards him. Mark Effernham was getting in there around the break. Brian O'Connor was causing problems. Um, Kieran O'Connor was causing problems running into him goal. They actually left a, a load of chances after them in the first half. Um, so I think Stephen Goggin is actually, I, I would say he's probably delighted with the draw. I don't think he wanted panels. I'd say he wanted the test of Dr. Crooks. Yeah. And if they have Conor O'Hare back in there, I think they'll give a very good uh, a very good performance against uh, against Causewind. Like that, it is a, it's a massive shame. Obviously, he was missing through family reasons, I think, on, on the night. It's a shame he wasn't there because who knows? Yeah, yeah. What, like he, he had four Quality. points against Billy Hague, like, you know. Yeah. So who knows what Quality. might have happened, but um, what? fair play to Croaks, like because we'd written them. We, in fairness, we we did have them written off. Well, I didn't, um, but you had. Well, yeah, I had. <laughs> in fairness, um, but uh, yeah, yeah, no, they they really they 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 stood up and like that uh, on their own home soil as well. You know, it was a big old big old occasion for them, and uh, there was a bit of a buzz around there as well. A lot of the club officers were around, and it was yeah. a nice atmosphere there. Nice. Not Thursday and Friday. Not just saying because it was Ebby Dorn, if it was anywhere else as well, I'd say the same thing. Yeah. There was, I thought the atmospheres in the two games outside of town were very nice compared to atmospheres in the games in town. Obviously oh, putting uh, his speak in for Abby Dorney for the county final, boys. Um, <laughs> we can't one, pass the one, one, yeah, one, oh, <laughs> one, one oh. item. Uh, yeah, true. One man uh, that was in for the first time for Kilmiley, uh, I won't ask James because he's a good buddy of his, uh, but Tom Ornan played up front. And he played well. He showed great pace after the game. But he was definitely doing the game. He played, he played very well. Um, and I think he caused a lot of consternation in there, in the full forward line. Might that be a position for Tom? Um, obviously, he's not getting any younger. He'd admit that himself. He's plagued with injuries. But yeah. he, he's still intelligent. Look, he still knows the game exactly. backwards. Exactly. You're, you're not going to put him centre-back like at this stage. And I don't think he'd be too happy either if he was handed the number six oh, jersey yeah. in, a, in a senior championship game. Exactly. The experience he has, the way he's able to hold up a ball. We saw it a good few times in the first half, particularly. And you've the lads like Bobby O'Connor and Phil running off him as well. Even Ronan and Jordan probably coming in running off him too. It, 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 there's a focal point there with him anyway, at least, and he, of course he's a goal threat. Like that, he's probably one of the best um, best hands in, in in the county in yeah. terms of catching balls. So absolutely, yeah. Yeah, he's definitely a threat inside there. They move Darren Nolan out into the into the half back, back line. Which yeah, it's probably his more natural position anyway. Would yeah, you say, James? It would be definitely. Yeah. A, you know, he, he, maybe long term, do we have to look at him there? Because we, we we still, I think, we still haven't settled on any real. Yeah. Yeah. You could say, what's Kilmeade want to fifteen now? 
Yeah. People thought, jeez, we could put him there, we could put him there. We yeah. could put him. You, you nearly have two wee fellas who are so versatile they can play in a lot of positions. Yeah, well, James Godley probably won't be back for the quarterfinals with that no, shoulder. No, no, uh, Mossy, there's a chance he could be back. He, be yeah, such a good and he would make he'd be a huge difference. He didn't even mention the man of the match there on the night, like yeah. parties. Jesus, how many party was unreal. How many times he on the ball? Oh, he was just everywhere at one stage. Stop, like, he's unreal. Well like John, uh, listen, um, Crokes, Kilmiley, Kilmiley really not sparkling as we're seeing. Crokes have really sort of cemented their position in the senior championship. I think if they could get a few more from in house, a few more Croke lads to, to play and commit. Uh, you know, you have the O'Connors doing it, you have Mike Lennon doing it, and Tom Doyle. If you had a few more, um, they wouldn't be far off the mark at all. Yeah, and Dr. Crokes, like they, they admitted to us before the first game that they were down at least half of the team that had played the previous season. So a club like that can't afford that turnover of players. So what they did the last day against Kilmoyle without their best man in Conor O'Hare is, is, is a fantastic uh, performance. It will give them encouragement, not only for the future, but for the preliminary quarterfinal on Friday evening. From a Kilmoyle point of view, I think the circumstances... Uh, are actually perfect now for John Myler. Um, yeah. Like you can go back to the old cliche of the wounded animal and Kilmoyley are wounded in a couple of ways. Obviously over the, the, the sad bereavement of their former player in John Paul O'Mahony and obviously with their current form over the last uh, three or four competitive fixtures. Like going into the quarter final, uh, we won't say in the long grass because Kilmoyley are never in the long grass, but this is perfect for Myler and his motivational uh, powers like he's going he's he's going to let rip over the next two weeks in training he's going to have fellas like ready to go through the wall uh, whenever and against whoever that they're lining out in the quarterfinal um this could actually be uh just what Kilmoyley need they mightn't have clicked up to now but they did get Paddy O'Connor back the last day they did get Daniel Collins back the last day they did get Coleman Savage coming in off the bench and, and he'll probably be in a much better position to maybe start in the quarter final. Um and if and like you say, if there's a chance of Mossy O'Connor getting back in as well, Kilmiley might might very well <coughs> be a totally different kettle of fish yeah. the next time we see them. I think they will. I think they will. Right, that's the first game, the Thursday night game. We spend a bit more on that there for Kilmiley's loss of form, we call it. And just to pay homage to, in many respects, to uh, Dr. Crokes for such a good performance and such a good championship, but they're not finished yet, maybe. Now, our next game happened on Friday night, and it happened in Abbey Dorney. Don't know why, but the two games that they played at the ones. But Abbey Dorney is a fine pitch, a fine village, and it's got some fine hurlers as well. Uh, and it's got Aidan Leahy. Um, <laughs> Causeway and St. Brendan's did battle there, and uh, we'll show you the highlights now. Turnover. McGrath has lost it though. It's Shawnee Sheehan who has it now. Sean Sheehan gives it to Tommy Casey on the run here Great now. Charge. Casey with the shot from distance. Is that oh, going to go over the bar? Score. Tommy Casey with a monster Casey. score. We saw him get two against Crocker as well in the first week out. Suits him. Back to Paul McGrath here. McGrath is going to have a look at the post. McGrath's shot is dropping dangerous, inside. Colin Harty is in there. Harty. One on one now inside. One on one. If he gets turn. any support coming through the middle. He's going to look. He scored a similar one to this last week. Oh, and has oh, got yeah. another one. Great Excellent score, score from score. Colin Harty. Exactly like the score he got great last score. week against Buddy Duff. He's so dangerous inside. He doesn't need much space at all. Over again. Here's Paul McGrath. McGrath pops it into the middle here. Lovely ball to Brandon Barrett. Brandon Trouble. Barrett is going to take it on here now. Brandon Barrett going through on goal. Brandon Barrett does bait it in the back of the net. Great goal. And Causeway stamping their initiative all over this 15 minutes gone. It is one goal and five points to no score. Serious trouble. Tooley. Perfect. Candy. ball looking for Keith Candy. First ball. Candy. Adam White, lovely pass. Clever little touch back to Adam White there. And Keeps the 1-2 now. And Candy has space to shoot. Keith Carmody has put this Straight between over the time. Paul McGrath going in there in the middle. Taps it out to Tom, Tommy Casey. It just seems to be working for Causeway. Everything they're trying. They're just getting the rub of the green. Evan Murphy going oh, from distance. Has sent it over the bar. Great score. Great score. Band of Causeway players look making it so difficult for St. Brendan's to break through. No a ball breaks through for Shawnee no. Brosnan. Chance for Brosnan to open the scoring here for St. Brendan's. And yeah. he has oh, finally, with 18 minutes gone on the clock, Art Fort have gotten their first point. 18 minutes of championship hurling without a score is on. He goes to the house. He's going to go along oh. here. 
Brendan Barrett and Colin Harty inside. Going to drop two. And Brendan Barrett on the rebound. His second goal of the match. The same Brendan's defence just didn't deal with it. In that one, turn it over. Get on first. He's going to run. He's going to run here now. He's got Ferris trying to get in past that point here. Now he goes first. Ferris with a bit of road in front of him here now. Ferris will he take on the shot here? Has he overcarried it? <laughs> it's going to go Good point, over the bar. Could have been a goal. Could have been a goal. Oh, oh another, God. another shot puck off. Dan Goggin with a chance to probably kill the game. Goggin yeah. buries it oh. into the back of the net. A gift. A gift. His first goal of the championship. That makes it 1-8 in all between the three games for Dan Goggin. Anyway, the ball is thrown back in here again. I don't know, was, it, was there much point in throwing the ball back in no, from the referee no. there? You're risking something again by yes. over. We have finally got the half-time whistle here. Um, what is Joe Diggins? Oh, lovely lovely pull along the ground here to Dan, Dan Matney. <laughs> Daniel Matney looks at the post, strikes off his right oh, and gets a score for himself. Easy score, easy score. Just one Born. ball, Joe Dean is out in front. Yeah, has he doesn't get the touch on it. Horan has it now. Horan with a chance to create something here. We saw Colm Harty hit one for in the first half from there. Good and score. he has replied, Good great score. reply, Graham Horan. There, on the way back up the pitch, sends a, a high ball into Colm Harty. Harty will do well to win it. Trevor Wallace was sticky, the favourite first. Sticky. He does very well to win it, does Colm Harty. Looking to see, is there any option? Oh. Harty goes for another one of those shots and has oh, and another score angle. from that angle. <laughs> We've had, gets the pass off to Jackie Griffin. Yeah, Griffin now finds no. Shawnee Brosnan. Brosnan with a bit of space, will shoot from Good the halfway Shawnee. line. Oh, sent it over the bar, says the, the umpire. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Inside now to Dan Goggin. Dan versus Dahi Griffin. Oh, Dan Goggin leaves him for dead. All along the end line here now. Goggin going inside. Has he support in the middle? He's going to go himself. And has sent it over Great the bar. Great score. Great score. You know, 1 1 by his standards is probably quite enough, but he's still <laughs> been a massive influence in the game. The game now, just in the last couple of minutes. And you're descending into ping pong, really. Yeah, that's it. A great strike here from Paul McGrath, though. Oh, yeah. Paul McGrath. Oh, Egan underneath it. Catch, it is John, John Egan. Egan. Given how to Podge Matney. Matney took it off his hurry oh. now, under serious pressure from three causing men here now. No, Gary. True to Gary Reardon. Gary scored two points the last day. Gary it's Reardon's going to get it's one today. Good. For Clubber Man of the Matches, we yeah. four minutes added on here now, and Artford looking to get something Same on the game. scoreboard. Gary Reardon looking to follow Gary, up yeah, with another, another one. Fair play to him. He's got another one. Two points for him, he two points for Brosnan. On to Gary. And responded really well to being dropped, I would say, last week. He has been much really better. That was poor by Gary Reardon, but the referee is going to blow for full time here. Well, it was a strange game, a first strange. half with three goals. Right, out in Abbey Dorney, uh, you've seen the highlights there on the Friday night. You had Causeway with a lot of injuries taking on uh, Sam Brendan's, who hadn't quite sparked yet in the championship and for the first 20 minutes or so they didn't even put a score in the board um, and then after that they got a couple of scores before half time and played better in the second half in fairness we were sending off in it so lots to discuss in this and the two lads who were covering that were Aidan and James and I'll start with Aidan as he was doing the commentary Aidan a strange sort of a game in many ways but as as uh, James will probably allude to, and he alluded to earlier, he's getting to like uh, cause him more than any Kilmiley man should. Uh, <laughs> and he thinks, he thinks they're dangerous. A guilty uh, pleasure. Yeah, it's a guilty pleasure. Uh, but if he's looking for a house move to Tralee or Abidoni, we'll, we'll sort them. Aidan, um, that game, um, Causeway and... Causeway started like a battle to hell. Yeah, and very surprising as well because from speaking to the St. Brendan's guys, they were really up for trying to get a win here, like and especially getting a win over the likes of a Causeway, you know, a team who's won two championships in the last how many ever years. Um, like it's madness. I only we're discussing this on the stream on Friday, twenty twenty one county semi final was the last win St. Brendan's have had in the county championship. So that's a long, long time wow, for them yeah. not to not to pick up a win. So they were mad t to try and 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 get a win here, and the first eighteen minutes were just, I, I they must Jerry and Kieran Fitz must be on the sideline. Go what in God's name do we do here? Like because it just nothing was going right from. They had pucked a good few wides, maybe three wides in the yeah. first five six minutes, scorable chances, 
I think they were all Fanon as Fanon well. They were, yeah. And I'd say Fanon just maybe lost the head a small bit after that, and that told in later on the game, uh, toward before half time, getting a send it off that was just really silly and probably just a bit immature, maybe something that look he'll, he'll probably grow out of. But not to take away from Causeway, they scored uh, three goals in the first half. A lot, of, I'd say two of them were turnovers. They were. Uh, one of them was a, a good effort. Um, was it was it Dan and Brendan? Oh, Brandon the first one was Brandon Ricky Shea, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So and then there was kind of two turnovers as well. Yeah, there was. Um, but yeah, Causey were just up for us like that. Billy Lyons didn't start either. Another man who maybe they rested more than anything, uh, for fear of of causing more injury to him. Um, but yeah, geez, they were just yeah. really really up yeah. for it. Like and Eve, like we keep on saying with all the injuries they have, they just don't seem yeah. to don't seem to care. They don't seem to bother everyone yeah. that comes in. Picks up the mantle like that. I think the biggest thing was Gary Carey. <laughs> a new just fullback. Just all of a sudden going fullback. back into the fullback line and playing unbelievably well. Yeah. The second half himself. Was he like, marking uh, Finan Egan? No, no Lee Moak. He's man to man on Lee Moak. Lee yeah. Moak. Yeah. 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 And he had Evan in front of him. Evan Murphy was, he gave oh, a man the match. He was oh, unbelievable. Yeah. Two points in the first half. Yeah. Tommy Casey got two points as well in the first half. Yeah. You know, he's, I think he, what, what a massive player Tommy yeah. is for Causeway. Oh, yeah. So he played with Kerry back in the day. Yeah, oh, top player. Top player. And Tommy Barrett as well, like, who was probably very good hurling to all year. You Tommy's in outstanding. Hurls away, no bother yeah, at all. He's so. a good man marker um, as well. Yeah, no, they're, they're Causeway are just, they're really interesting. If they can get anyone back at all, like, they're so dangerous. They're so dangerous. James, if you look at, at even the defence uh, in St. Brendan's, their defenders, you have probably the best man marker in the county or in the country in Eric Lean. I mean, basically, I said last week, if you went to toilet, he'll go with you if he's marking you. Simple as. Um, you have Dan Deneen back there. You have uh, John Egan, who's playing better than he ever played. He fits that number six or that uh, plus one role back at the back very, very well. Dahi Griffin, uh, you know. And then at midfield, you have Shawnee B. And you have Fanon Egan up front. I know he didn't last a full hour. Um, and these guys, so... What? I know they've lost Mackesy. What's what's wrong with them? Is it they, they play I football and hurling? I don't is, being the dual club? No. I, in isolation, you have to take last Friday night in isolation. They could not win a ball in a half hour line. They could not win a shot puck out. Everything they tried fell apart. Everything. It's like, this is what I think I have to give credit to Stephen Logan, the management team, and the players of Causeway. They said, right, give it to him short there. Limerick's tactic. Let them come at us, we'll turn them over and we'll go the other way. And time and time and time again, they did it. Yeah. They let St. Brendan's come so far and only let them get so far and then ravage them. And it was, it was revelling stuff. It was, there was two or three cause for this out of every player. You had Dahi coming out, you had Gary Reardon coming out, you had John Egan coming out, you probably had Stephen Lee or Eric Lean coming out with ball. And every time they got so far, bang, they were hit with two or three different cause of players. And no matter what they did, they couldn't get the pass off. Maybe they did, then that player was ravaged again. Causes just turned them over time and time again in that middle area, and that's that centre toward where you could say they had a control. And then if they did get past that line, and every, what they did was striking out to Evan Murphy. He was just everything he I did. Know, was yeah. Just, yeah, he was like he a magnet. Yeah. And he was just the ball in the air. He won every puck out. He won. Yeah. Well, if it dropped to the ground, he didn't win it. Tommy Casey won it. And if they got, got through, they knew Tommy Barrett stopping it. They knew Gary Carey flying out with ball. They were everyone. And John Mike. Some of the puck outs are unbelievable. Is he older? Is he older? He could have fell asleep. He could have fell asleep. He could have fell asleep. Is he older or younger he's than you? He's older than me, and he, you know, <laughs> he doesn't look. And he's still he's playing. He's looking. Yeah, he is. And you know, was he, he in the asleep. nog? <laughs> <laughs> he was so untested. It was like they, they could not get near him because the boys outside were just doing yeah. such a good job. Now, even up front, and you had De- Eric Lee and Dan Goggin. We talked about it before. How we said, right, Mackey forward, and and one of the best men markers, but. Dan just said, right, I'm not standing in there, Matt. I'm standing next to you. He took off around the middle of the exactly, field. Yes. Everywhere the ball was, Dan was there. Bang. Yes, Linked yes. him up. Then he'd find the lads. He'd find Carmo. He'd find Brendan Barrett. They were everywhere. Yeah, yeah. And then what really impressed even more was their hurling, their stick work. Yeah. They were, it was pinging ball to each other. There's no stupid pass where it would drop five yards in front of a fella. Yeah. He's getting creamed. No lobs. It was bang into the hand. Yeah. It was into space. Everything was done as it should be. And you know, it was a really, really impressive performance. Yeah. So and the two of you, sorry, go on. St. St. Bernard's now have to go into playing Parnells, who will probably get a bit of, um, I suppose, motivation out of that performance from, from Arfurt. The fact that they're going to be missing Fanon Egan, as far as I know, they're not appealing mm-hmm. that. It's just a one game suspension for Fanon. So yeah. missing the game against Parnells. And they have to go into that game now and really, you know, try and get back on the horse, I suppose. Yeah. And try and find some bit of form to get over Parnells. 
um, which I look I expect him to get over panels yeah. to be honest I just there's a couple of them playing panels. in the under 21 football final tonight Gary O'Reilly and yeah, yeah yeah like you know yeah. so it's it's not easy Johnny B that's yeah. that's what one day off to go into a championship game again like a championship mm-hmm. final into another championship game so um, not easy on the, on those young lads um, and like that that disrupts their week of preparation as well you know so yeah. maybe they met once since Probably and in in, in a ward, so. I know there's no problem with you. In a ward, and in twenty wards, in a ward, are yeah. Causeway uh, serious contenders now? Yeah, that's one ward. Are they serious contenders? Would you say you dark horses? I, in twenty wards, they're the farm team in the county at the minute. There is no team playing better hurling than them at the minute. That's twenty-two it. wards. Twenty wards. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. So that's our Causeway and St Brendan's uh, look back and on. Friday night here in the Austin Stack Park. Uh, John O'Dowd and myself had the pleasure of watching a young Bally Duff side and Crat O'Neill's the county champions doing a battle. The highlights uh, will follow and we'll have a discussion about that game shortly. He sends it in long. They do have a small full forward line. That gives Eamon Shanahan a chance here. But Luke Rochford is lively. Bally Duff maintain possession. Is that young Stefan Carrig? He's on the run, the corner forward. Lays it off. Chance of a score from the wing forward. That's a lovely... Sc- Dara Goulding. Goulding finds Aidan Curley. Nice little pop pass by Curley. Good skill by Dylan Moriarty. He can score here. Moriarty, yeah. this is an excellent effort. This is a super score. From- Southern takes him, so it's white against white. Sean so O'Donoghue, great take again by Gavin Parker. Against Aaron White. He started well, Gavin Parker. Is he accurate? A brilliant catch and a brilliant score. That's father, the great Michael Parker, uh, uh, Mike's dad of the pub. Here we go. Here's Bally Duff on the attack. Chance of a score for Adam Seagal. That's a great run and Seagal's not going to miss from there. Went long mm. in towards Luke Rochford. Rochford goes up ahead of Eamon Shanahan. Ah, this is a nice play by Rochford again. He finds another little gap and a beautiful pass to Killian Boyle. Killian Boyle of Stefan Carrig inside. Pops it off to him. This must be a chance. It's a goal. goal. It's actually Seagal. Seagal was on the straight burst. I think he's after taking the pass from Killian Boyle. He pretty much started that move more to Adam Seagal. And I'm there was buried in the net by uh, Adam Seagal. Ballied off 1 6. Crotta, two points. That score is going to make a big difference to the halftime outcome in this game. What can Crotta do to respond? Cormac White, he sends it to Parker. Parker's away towards goal. What will he do? He'll tap it over the bar. Lovely score by their lines. It's going to break here to Jack Enright trying to get on a run again. He's made a couple of long bursting runs. He's on another one. He's away from Dominic Nolan. Laid it off. Chance of a goal. Stephen Carrick. Very unselfish to Rochford. Has to be a goal. Is a goal. A great run by Enright. Unselfish work by Carrick. Back of the net. Luke Rochford. Under pressure from Aidan Behan. Free quickly taken by Dennis Quill. Quill to Shawnee McGilligan. This is an effort from play. This will be a lovely score if he gets it. And he does. I don't think it was a foul either. Slitter's thrown in well won there now by Cormac White. White sends it inside towards the full forward line. If it could be popped off, Sean Murnan, he's going to go for his own score. I thought he was going to pop it off to Raymond Nolan. And that was a good point and just proves he can do it. So he's doing his chances no harm. There goes the halftime whistle. There goes the halftime whistle. Short puck out there by PJ O'Gorman. Referee Niall Malone. The tough first half, Eamon Shannon. Sends it long now towards Sean Murnan. In towards Murnan and Raymond Nolan. Raymond Nolan pops it off to Cormac White. He deserves a score. He was excellent in the first half, Cormac White. Has he got the score? Adam Seagal, but McGilligan still gets it. McGilligan, low pass in towards the full forward line. That should be Thomas Slattery's. Slattery doing well. But well robbed by Raymond Nolan. Nolan will score. He does score. Good pe- Lovely point. And... Uh I think if they get enough ball into their full forward line, it could cause problems. Dara Slattery sends it long. Beautiful pick up by Stefan Carrig. He's showing pace as well. Lays it off to Luke Rochford. This would be a lovely score if they get it. They do get it. Dara Slattery. Carrig with passes it to Adam Seagal. Seagal has sent it in low towards Rochford. Rochford against Eamon Shanahan. Shanahan came, tried to get in front. Rochford's in behind. He'll score here again. I've no doubt Rochford will score here again. And he does. Over the bar. Rotta sends it up towards Gavin Parker. Excellent from Parker. Parker will try and run. No, he'll go straight for a score. And he'll get the score. Brilliant play. The sweeper there. As Mort said, they kind of had to do it to cut out the Ballyduff goal threat. Here's David Goulding now, the Ballyduff substitute. 
another experienced performer well able to hurl lays it off to his brother Dara that'd be a monster score that is one of the scores of the game one brother Mert David Goulding lays it off to Dara Goulding what do you make of that Mert? yeah well again given all the lads are run that's what they're doing now Jason had a good game uh, did nothing wrong and here comes Gavin again Parker goes again from long range what? real game but, but Bally Duff are not flinching an inch Dylan Moriarty, long ball all the way through to Jack Enright. Jack Enright will take on Eamon Shannon. Eamon's already had a tough night at the office trying to keep tabs on Luke Rochford. Now he's another speedster in Jack Enright to deal with it. It's laid back to the substitute. That's David Gould. Ooh, just going to drop short as it dropped into the net. Is it a mistake by the keeper? I think it is. It was an effort by David Goulding for a point from all of 44. One of the best Kerry players. Here's Cormac White, another man who's been outstanding. To Declan O'Donoghue. Declan hasn't really had a chance to go forward too much in this game. This should be his first score. This is his first score. Sheehan lays it off. Attempted ball in towards McGilligan. Goes over Dara Slattery's head. He's going well, for goal. going to go for goal here. He's gone through. He's going to hit a rocket. Good save, I think, by PJ Gorman at his near post. It's gone out for a 65. Oh, that's it off to Killian Murphy. Killian Murphy back here towards Tommy Grady. Tommy Grady's going to try one from all of 60 metres. That's a great effort by Tommy Grady. Ooh. That's a great 3-14 to Ballyduff. It's 14 points to Crot O'Neill's. This could be the last action of the game. Indeed, it is the last action of the game. Did they actually pull in it, did it? <laughs> <laughs> the referee. A bit of a meaningless throw-in ball there at the... And there were some of those names there. I'm sure you were familiar with watching uh, those highlights. Um, the likes of uh, Jack Inright was in there. Dylan Moriarty, a great time for him. Stephen Carrick, uh, whose father would be from Tarbert. Um, you had Luke Rochford. Uh, Jason Bowler was back. Adam Seagal, who is a, a dual player, football and hurling. Um, you had Aidan Curley. But you had Killian Boyle, but you didn't have Evan, you didn't have Mikey, uh, you didn't have Padraig Boyle, uh, John. And then on the Crotter side, there was no Shane Nolan, there was no Sean McGrath, there was no uh, Rory Manny, there was no um, Shane, um, um, there was no, um, what's his name? Uh, help me, lads. Uh, <laughs> yeah, basically, Mark. Uh, yeah, there was no Killian, Killian Trent. 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 Basically, yeah. uh, mm. this was... Uh, Two shadow outfits on Friday night. Both Belly Duff and Crotta had already qualified for the quarterfinals. So they decided, understandably in the circumstances, that they would both only start with four of the sides that had played the previous weekend. Belly Duff had Dara Slattery, Adam Seagal, Luke Rochford and Dylan Moriarty. Crotta started with uh, Eamon Shanahan, Aidan Behan, Carmack White and Shawnee McGilligan. But interestingly enough, Mort, it wasn't a game really that was played in the spirit of just a B match. It was actually you had young players on both sides who were 100% determined to catch the eye of both Barry O'Grady for Belly Duff and Brendan Mahoney for Crotta and lay down a marker for future selection when it comes to the knockout stages. So it actually did turn into be a quite interesting encounter and a very skillfully fought encounter between uh, two young sides and both sets of management, even though the goals were the difference in the end, that was the main reason that Ballyduff uh, emerged victorious, especially the two goals in the space of three minutes in the first half from Adam Seagal and from Luke Rochford. They were the scores that decided the game. But Crotta didn't throw in the towel or anything of the sort after that, you know, even though they didn't have to win the game. They kept plugging away and they had some very impressive individual performances themselves. So I think what they've done, both sides, is... Um, Rule themselves out of the Intermediate Championship. <laughs> well, that's, that's that, the first thing. That's one, that's one thing and we have so to... So James doesn't get his medal. No, and that's, uh, that's from another team, Kilmiley, uh, pulling out of the Intermediate. So James, his well, last his at last Kilmiley's biggest... end was forced though, do you know what I mean? Forced, like, I mean, yeah. it's, that's... They, this could have been avoided. You know what I mean? Could have been divided. But the one thing I would say, what it has done... Aidan Lee, he plays intermediate <laughs> holiday. You know, at least nice. he, I, be that so he, at least he's a chance of yeah. winning something. It a miraculous was, it, medal, maybe. It does, 
<laughs> Aidan is saying that, that I, I think he's been playing intermediate championship for the last six or seven years without uh, yeah. a victory. Yeah. And the more teams that pull out of the competition, the greater opportunity there is that Aidan might just go all the way. And he's already doubled so they're saying he did. And, seen it? Seen it? and you never know, he could win an intermediate medal. I think tonight's without game will be a draw. A single yeah. match. <laughs> but uh, back to Ballyduff and Crotta, um, what they have done, both uh, sides now, is is they have completely reinforced the togetherness among the squad. Everybody will feel now that they're part of it to some degree, which some of the other teams have not been able to do, possibly, um, even though all sides have used their bench to good effect or as much effect as possible. But this has shown uh, both Barry O'Grady and Brenda Mahoney that we have strength and depth, that we have lads who maybe we didn't think were good enough for the first 15, and now after seeing them, Maybe they are, and they've put uh, in eye-catching displays and has given us both food for thought going into the quarterfinals. I've kind of one question on it, though, yeah. for everyone, I suppose. Like, they have a week off, regardless. They were going to have a week off. Are you going to find a challenge game to the level of playing a belly duff or crotty team inside here? A full-strength team, two of them. Yeah. You're not going to find that challenge game. I think it's absolutely madness what they did. I actually cannot understand it at all. Fair enough, taking fellas off at half time, but surely you want thirty hard minutes. Like, yeah. like how? Where else are you going to get? Like for Ballyduff off to play a full strength Crata team to see some way where they are. Let's say after even thirty minutes, and the other way for Crata, even see just to to get to see where Ballyduff are themselves. Like you know they're a contender. Yeah. That's the other side of the coin. Yeah. So I think are you are you was, suggesting that when the two teams were basically? we say second teams with a couple of starters, couple, yeah. that yeah. if it was a, a, a second team against a, a stronger team... No, I think you both can, teams you can, should have started. Yeah. Should have started. Stronger yeah. teams yeah. than what... Way stronger teams than what they did. Yeah. And fair enough that any guy who was at risk at all, off at halftime, no bother at all. Yeah. The only thing but that they, they, got the only thing that they possibly decided there was the fact that they were in the four-team group, which yeah. was a strong group. All four teams. They might have said, we've already had two really tough encounters that we don't need a third one in successive yeah. weeks. While the teams in the three teams group, no disrespect to Tralee Parnells, which obviously they put in an unbelievable show against Dick Sna and what Dr. Crooks did against Kilmiley last week. Maybe Belly Duff and Crotta said, we'll try and keep our powder dry. We have a few injuries. We'll, we'll, yeah. keep, we'll just hold off. Maybe we'll get the extra week break and... They'll either be undercooked or they'll be unbelievably fresh going into the quarters. Yeah, well, I can I can vouch for that because cross in terms of Shane Olin was had a, was sick coming into the last game against St. Brendan's and uh, Shawnee McGrath um, has an ankle problem and will be back for the quarterfinals. Jazzy uh, Jazzy Sean will be back, uh, I would say. Um, and you also had Beans who picked up a knock, although he did play in the last game, he picked up a knock in the game before that. And I suppose with no jeopardy there, it didn't matter whether they were first yeah, or second days. They got no Rory, Killian, like young yeah. guys, younger fellas who need games probably in town to grow too. Like. Yeah, but Killian has played a load of, between football with Simmons and Rory all year. And remember Rory and those who were involved with Crotter last year uh, when they played the Munster Championship, they got, they got two games in that. So, And he was in, in Fitzgibbon Cup duty uh, here in Abidorn, yeah. one of the finest mm. pitches in Kerry. Yeah. Um, yeah. Facility wise, etc. Um, I don't like it more. Too look at. I, I think yeah, they should right. see that. I, I, I think these guys here on this team, none of them will play her, her championship for the rest of the year now. Intermediate or senior, none. Of them, there's a lot of them in one place. Yeah. I'm, 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 I could pick out ten fellas there and say. Yeah. That's but I tell you, Luke Rashford will he play will. it. Of course, you'll have Adam Segal will play it. Darius Lattery will play it. But there's other fellas there who won't touch the ball for the rest of the championship. Yeah, but Dylan Moriarty is really coming back into it now. He played last week. He played all the games. He played all. He's had injury. He's been I, plagued. He's a I confidence he's player. I was terrible. And I, I think, yeah, I, I, right? I, I mean, think they're wrong. To, I think they should have Cosman played more. Didn't do it. They could have done it. Cosman yeah. Affleck said, look, we're they dead rubber around. More we might as well do nothing. Yeah, they'd made way more of a reason. They'd yeah, way more reason. Totally, it's a it's totally different way of looking at it. And the only, only time will tell on which team is right. No, look, fair. You say could have backfired. If Bally Duff and Crotter come out in their respective quarterfinals and they're beaten, then... There'll be Finger serious pointing. questions asked. Yeah. If they well, go and win and they're fresh and they win by eight or ten well, points and they're qualified. Crotter could end up playing Clemente. They'll say that the end is worth to me. You've got to be careful what you wish for. You've got to be careful what you wish for. In a challenge game this weekend, is it? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In Abidoni pitch. In Abidoni pitch. Yeah, well, 
Apologies, it's, sorry. Uh, <laughs> we would have to not, check. <laughs> uh, to anybody from Valleydoff and uh, Crotter, uh, this is not well, my opinion. I'm I believe sure you were right. Them had the same it, conversations. Yeah. But it <laughs> was great evening. to see different opinion on the panel and to see a, a young gun like Aidan <laughs> Leahy really let off. He's really getting psyched up presenting the <laughs> game tonight. He'll have retired in a couple of years' time without any medals. Anyway, uh, that's <laughs> the game. Now we move to the game that's very close to Aidan's heart. And that was on Saturday night. And that was the meeting to top the group, mind you, between Abby Dorney, inspired by Michael O'Leary, and eventually, Lixna, inspired by the great Shane Conway, who played 30-odd minutes for the first time since Kerry played Mead in the National League back in, oh, I'd say it was February. So now we look at the highlights of Abby Dorney. And folks, look out for a goal in this. That is one of the best goals I have seen since I was six years of age, which isn't <laughs> there yesterday. <laughs> there between the Lixna goalkeeper and the full back bit of a mix up this is going to be a chance now for Oshin Mansell this is a soft score and it is a score for Hurler with Kerry as well O'Connor sends it in towards the big man Michael O'Leary O'Leary goes up great catch take it's a goal. Oh, oh. Net. I think it's a goal it's I think it must be a hole in the net but it's gone through what a brilliant goal by Stiers County runners up yeah good uh, from uh, Jack Brosnan and he'd be delighted with that getting over the bar but a poor uh, he's trying to get away from Shane McGilligan. Is he fouled by Shane McGilligan? No, he isn't. Lays it off. Chance for Abby Dorney to get a score. Popped off to Michael O'Leary. He's going to do damage again, is he? Very unselfish. Cross goal. Chance of a goal. Great save. He marked straight in towards Michael O'Leary. Oh, he's got, got it in his grasp again. This could be another chance. This is another chance and a good save by Martin Stackpool. Michael O'Leary, straight away, winning ball against Jerry Stackpool, going for the juggler, could have tapped it over the bar, went for goal from a tight angle, deep. Yeah. Abby Dorney free now, from long range, in towards O'Leary. This might go over his head. No, it doesn't! He plucks it out of the sky again. Brilliant by O'Leary! What a goal! What an unbelievable angle! What a catch! What a score! What a player! That's messy like with a hurley. He grabs it, he almost falls over, and then along the deck, the keeper is diving. He doesn't see it. He. Anyway, although Ger Stackpool close to Oshin Mansell at this moment in time, Mansell gets away a smart pass to Mikey Clifford. Does Mikey have the accuracy? He certainly does. What a brilliant score, Mansell. Can they get another score here? Oshin Mansell, very intelligent in possession. Ooh. Very intelligent in possession. This time lays it off to Daniel O'Leary this time. Daniel O'Leary says, This can't all be about my brother. I want to get in on this party. He used to take all the food <laughs> off the table at home. I want a little crumb. I want a half. Or the game will be out of reach. High ball in again now. This time Dara Shannon's away from Michael O'Leary. Got his hand to it. Dropped it off. Oshin Mansell's going to pick it up. Oh, intelligent play by Mansell. Lays it off on another goal. I think it's the brother this time. Is it Daniel O'Leary, Mort? Have we two goals from Michael O'Leary? Have we one now from Daniel O'Leary? That's wonderful, intelligent play by Ashin Mansell. It is, it's the number nine. It's Daniel O'Leary, it's in the back of the net. Pitched by Abby Dorney in the puck out. I think it was Jed Mansell that time. He lays it off to young Callum O'Sullivan. Callum O'Sullivan in ties towards Ashin Mansell. He's been excellent so far, really smart. Is he going to go for a goal? He's fouled. Or is he? What's the ref going? Nine minutes. Will he bring up a trio of goals? Here he goes. He strikes. Ah, oh, what a penalty. What has been a scintillating first half performance by the men from Abbey Dorney. Play. That's Niall O'Mahony trying to get it into his grasp there. But looks now win it back. Owen Stack, his first chance of a score. He hasn't been experienced, but they just haven't been getting enough possession. Here's a long free sent in towards the full forward. And can they win possession now? Broken Jane by Conway Stephen Egan. Oh. Egan does well. Good defence by Abby Dorney. Looks now persevering here, though. Getting into grasp. It is Conway. He's in close to goal! Oh. He's in close to goal! That's what Shane Conway can do. He's back. The man of the moment. The Ma top player in Kerry Hurling. He's been out for ages. He missed to Joe McDonough. He's missed everything. He's missed the championship up to now. A game like this, Mort, because it's not a winner-takes-all battle. But Lixnar are now playing and a chance for Conway to get another score. Off his right-hand side. Opportunistic effort. I think he's got it too. That's a great score by Shane Conway. Talk about making an impact. There he is. Cool and calm as a breeze. So in there in the front. Out. Uh, Colin Corkery scoring points 
that Lazarus couldn't score and I, even with this from Lixna they'll hardly make a Lazarus style recovery because that's Jack Sheehan game, but they don't want to collapse in the second half and be hanging on at the end There's and here's Reggie effort. Galva now another experienced player and that's a great score from Reggie now sweeper trying to find Dara Shannon good stick work by Shannon controls it lays it off chance of a score that's Shane Conway again is it I think it is Shane Conway again he sends it between the posts you know, at this moment in time for the leaders because their massive half-time lead is being eradicated by the minute. And there's another score. And this time it's by Colin Sheehy. Ground and um, a chance of a goal. Here go Abby Dorney though. Can they steady the ship now? They sent it in towards Mansell. Mansell gets it into his hand. He turns past Christopher Sullivan. He buries it in the back of the net. Game. Set. And Matt takes on Jack Sheehan, goes through him, lays it off oh. to Jack Brosnan. Jack Brosnan can score. Jack Brosnan does score. 35, Kelton Malloy will be in soon enough. Made a big impact against Tralee Parnells with a fine score in the second half. Here's Abby Dorney looking for a score. They see Ashes the bodies all over, so the quicker now the ref blows, the quicker the better. This could be a great individual score from Oshin Mansell. He's ran from his own half. And he does, he finishes it. Excellent return from Lixna in the second half as yeah, the final goes. whistle goes. As Conor Bohan fires out the puck out. A fine game of hurling. It appeared to be one-sided. So there you had some wonderful goal scoring there from Michael O'Leary, uh, from Oshin Mansell and from Shane Conway. And that was a superb game. It was a game of two halves in every sense of the word. Abidorni totally dominant in the opening half and then Lixna came back in the second half and outscored them and outscored them well and if there was another 10 minutes played could possibly have beaten them Aidan told me earlier uh, now talking uh, John we we'll start with you as you were commentating on this game and you have been eulogizing and you have been absolutely uh, marveling at the skills of Michael O'Leary uh, just tell me a small bit about his goals. You've seen him often enough. You've been dreaming about them. Um, I think now this weekend is obviously the All-Ireland Senior Hurling Championship semi-finals. And no matter whether you talk about TJ Reid for Kilkenny, Shane O'Donnell for Clare, Pat Horgan for Cork, and we'll say Aaron Gillan for Limerick. Or James McGafty for Kilmiley. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You look at those aristocrats of, of stick work and what Michael O'Leary did, albeit in a club sense, at a lower level on last Saturday night, it was an absolute exhibition of everything that's good about the game. Like one man basically decided the outcome of the game in the first 20 minutes, shall we say, of the match. He was just unstoppable, unmarkable. Uh, imperious, unmarkable, no matter what word you want to use about it. Lixna had absolutely no answer to Michael O'Leary. And it wasn't as if he wasn't without support either from other Abbey Dorney players who put their hands up at different stages of the game. But this is a player that, given the right supply, that put in the right positions, that in the right frame of mind on any given day, he can take a game away from the opposition because of his sheer physical attributes, his free-taking... His general ability to be an absolute nuisance and, and, and to be a torment to any defence he comes up against. Like he had three goals and six points on the board before half time, and the game was over. Like it was over. It was four nine to four points. Uh, he's just a fantastic player. I think you don't have to be a hurling enthusiast to enjoy watching uh, Michael O'Leary play. And it's, it's been clear over the last maybe two years. Like, is it two years, James, who's been absent yeah. from the Kerry team? that he's just a gigantic loss. And no matter who takes the, uh, the Kerry Intercounty job next season... Davy Fitz. The first... The first uh, Davy Fitz. <laughs> he's at loose end. He's available now. He's at a loose end indeed. He only has to come over the ferry to Tabert. So, we'll, uh, we'll look after him. Of course, yeah. We'll yeah, look after we, him. Uh, what's his name? But, uh, Anthony Daly came over for Kilmoyley, yeah. which is a lesser cause. Yeah. <laughs> the first, Greater uh, cause, you think. Yeah. The, the first phone call that has to be made by the next Kerry manager is to Michael O'Leary. It's as simple as that. You With his back and his body hold up. He's a lot of calls to make. He's a lot yeah, of yeah. calls to make. No, He's exactly. a lot of phone calls to make. Exactly. <laughs> um, uh, from, from my point of view, I don't, really, I, I don't really care about the small little obstacles that might be stopping him from giving the full inter-county commitment. A, a player of Michael O'Leary's standard, even if he can only give 80% commitment with his injuries, etc., you get him on board. Because he's too good not to be on board. 
and what he did on Saturday night has lit up the whole championship and Abby Dorney I, be, I believe they were contenders uh, beforehand now they will be worried by their second half uh, performance the last day but that was probably understandable as well if you're 17 points ahead at yeah. half time that you're not going to come out of the dressing room in the second half with the same uh, level of commitment because they knew the job was done but with Michael O'Leary in that sort of form the championship is as open as it can be for Abby Dorney yeah, and Oshin Mansell, James, excellent at wing forward. Um, he uh, scored 1-2, uh, I think. He, he was excellent. And then you had Jed Manson. Ronan Donovan is a fine centre-back. I think very yeah. much underrated. Was missing and, for us. Yeah. 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 And, 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 and James yeah. O'Connor, of course. James is James. James like solid, great player. Solid. Stephen Many Egan years. is... is, is yeah. a, now, they pushed uh, Mikey Clifford up uh, uh, to the centre-forward uh, to Mark Darishanin originally, and then they moved uh, Jack Sheehan back in defence. And that worked for them as well. Jack is a very accomplished player. But overall, would you say that Abby Dorney have a shout at the championship and Lixna showed in the second half with Shane Conway, and they also have Conor O'Keefe to come back in. Um, different that, element. Different, different element. That it, it changes the picture dynamic, dramatically. The whole game, the whole dynamic changes. You know yourself, Abby Dorney, what they've done with Michael Leary, it's, it's, it's actually clever with what they've done. Right, you see sweepers in every game. Right, okay, let's wipe out all that. Stand on the edge of the square and we're going to hit ball into you. Yeah. Right, sit your sweeper back there if you want to and let him under Michael O'Leary. Michael O'Leary just takes him out of it. Yeah. It's, just, it's a huge physical presence. It's like, you, we always call that you're trying to walk your way through the lines. You need a target somewhere. Right? You're not going to get the passes off maybe. You're not going to be able to play the short hurling. You've always got that. Yeah. And that's even under pressure, even if you're just two or three fellas around you, you can still just Lobbing bang in. it as hard as you can yeah. and might get under that. And nearly 100% of the time, he is underneath it. And he'll, he'll break it down, he'll have to catch it. So like, I think it's, it's going to cause the teams with the sweepers, like the Crottas, like Bell Duffs, a huge problem. Problem. Because they know you sit your sweeper deeper. You will yeah. have to sit your sweeper deeper, way much deeper. Back. What I will say though is, I just think Lixna, first of all, has oh, yeah. their man marking. It was totally off, the wrong choice. Off. Yeah, yeah. Like, I think the same situation against Eric Lean, Mark and Michael, and John Egan sitting in front of that. Now that's a lot more difficult for Michael to score what he score. Yeah. yeah. You know? It will be. So I, that's yeah. where I kind of have to. John sits deeper, he does sit pour deeper. Pour a bit of cold water on. Oh, no, things. I you know. What but, I mean? you, like, but he's playing it down. Yeah. No. Hang on, though. No. And I've said this every week, we're on here, like there is an over alliance on Michael. There is. Okay? There is a he's bit. going to be marked out of, most likely, the next game Abby Dorney plays, he's going to be marked out of it because. Yeah. A Goldman how Savage or not, whatever will have a go at him. Yeah, how could yeah. you not mark a guy who scored three, four, to, whatever, just, three, whatever he yeah. scored? Extra cover is um, done there. So it's the rest of the guys then, when to he's marked up. out of it, that have yeah. to step up. And I think like for the t for probably the third match in a row inside in town, I go back to last year, Crotty game, Betty Duff game, uh, against the Breeze, and then the second half against Six Nah. Shane Conway one-on-one -on -one inside with no one, no protection whatsoever in front of the man that's marking him. Yeah. 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 It's like the, the, the one, one, yeah. two scored and what had in, in literally the first three or four minutes. Yeah, he yeah. had. But you, like like you need to be quick and they, they don't play yeah. sweepers, so we Shane don't come as grand cider. I yeah. need to drop someone. Back Somebody's got to drop. Yeah. Somebody has. But to I think, drop. in fairness, you know Abby I mean, Dorney. Like, I think uh, the coach was the, the the manager was 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 otherwise engaged. Could just couldn't make it on Saturday. Uh, and but they could have been under orders to go no matter what man for man and see what happens yeah, because look at the end of the day, you're not going to get knocked out or anything like that. Yes. And like that with the lead they had, then, okay, fair enough, you can test out fellas, man on man, test out guys, man on man, uh, against Shane Conway, I think there was two or three different, there was definitely two different people marking him throughout the, the second half, but I think they definitely failed that test in the first 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, I would still say Abby Dorney are contenders, and I would still say Lixna are contenders, lad. Everybody oh, yeah. agree with that? Yeah, everybody yeah, if you get if you, if you get Conor O'Keefe back, and you get maybe Jeremy McKenna, yeah. back as well into the mix for Lixna because like in the second half Lixna put up 114 now yeah. okay you can say it's against a slightly detached Abby Dorney who have done their job and they feel that it's all over and done with at half time but that was still a massive response from Lixna like they could have been heading home last Saturday night in the depths of despair after getting an unmerciful hammer and believing that yeah. we actually have no place going into this quarterfinals but now you can even hear it from the Lixna fans as soon as Shane Conway came on Everything was different. Yeah. They had belief again. And obviously the players on the pitch had renewed faith and renewed belief as well once their talisman was on the field. Like, they were excellent in the second half. The game was over, okay. But they will have gone home on Saturday night 
not dejected by the overall defeat, but re-energised by the prospect of what they might do with a Shane Conway-inspired team. Right, so that's the wrap-up of last weekend's uh, Hurling Championship. We have preliminary round coming up, and we'll also explain to the best of our ability the rules and regulations from here on in once the draw is going to be made on Friday night, I believe. Now, this weekend, Friday night, actually, with the two preliminary quarterfinals, I think this is probably the first year of preliminary quarterfinals because of the 10 teams in the championship, and that necessitated a group of four and two trees. Um, so, this weekend, we have a preliminary quarterfinal where Causeway will play Dr. Croaks here in Ostensac Park, and out the road at Abbey Dorney, it's St. Brendan's versus Tree Parnell. So, John... Very quickly, Causeway and Dr. Crokes. Obviously, Crokes have had a good game against uh, against Kilmiley, but Causeway are a different animal altogether. Yeah, Dr. Crokes, 16 points in the first game, one forty in the last day. Conor O'Hare to come back into the team. They'll be confident of putting in maybe an even better performance than they did against Kilmiley. But Causeway, as James says, they're cock-a-hoop at the moment. They fired in 317 last week. There's a chance Gavin Dooley might even be back in the mix uh, for this weekend, although they'd probably hold off on using him maybe. Uh, not taking anything for granted, but they might risk him before the quarterfinals. Causeway uh, will win this game, even though Dr. Crokes will probably put in another good uh, performance, but definitely Causeway to advance. James, as the only Kilmiley supporter of Causeway in the parish, uh, <laughs> what do you think from what you're saying, despite your respect for Crokes, and their efforts, um, I think you would be a Causeway, uh, give yeah, it Causeway yes, vote. Yes, they're, they're on a roll now and they, they can feel it. Yeah. Momentum is with them. Like, uh, Crokes will be better with Conor here. Hopefully, they, they use him in the right way. They don't disrupt the team. They're, they're nice balance yeah. against Kilmai. They're a nice balance. Mm -hmm. Like, don't disrupt it too much, but adding his quality, sprinkling his quality there. But I think Causeway will have too much. They will have too much for them. Yeah. Aidan, would you say Causeway will have too much for Crokes? <coughs> yeah, it'll be uh, kind of a. A kind of, it'll be a good test for Causeway, and I'd say like that. Goggin will be delighted to get another test. Like he doesn't want to walk over. Really, I think it will be probably close enough. I'd say like that last ten minutes maybe Causeway. Although if their second half wasn't fantastic in Abidorney at the same time, they just kind of kept Don't the lead go on. Don't for things, a draw, so. please. No, <laughs> be no draw this week. Uh, no, I think Causeway they will get over the line, all right. But um, it'll be interesting, and I'd say Crocs will have them under pressure in periods. Right, so then out in Abbey Dorney, Aidan, we'll stick with you as uh, you'll be using the stick, your hurl out there soon. Um, St. Brendan's and Tralee Parnells. Again, Brendan's, despite the absence of Fanon Egan, you'd have to fancy they've got to win a game and this would look to be an ideal opportunity against the Parnells side who in their opening game showed that, you know, they are committed yeah. and they're entitled to be at the top table. Like that, I, I haven't heard about any of the kind of updates on the couple of injuries they picked up against Abbey Dorney, so I'm not sure, like, they, they'd want everyone anyway. They if would, they're missing yeah. anyone, like, it, it, it's going to be a loss from, yeah, you'd expect. I think the experience in the backs is what's going to drive St. Brendan's on and probably their, their long-range shooting I imagine it's going to be similar conditions to last week where there'll be that breeze blown into the kind of the yeah. complex ends, you know. Yeah. And the likes of Darren Deneen, etc., John Egan, I think they'll be able to pick off scores from, from distance, whereas Parnells probably won't be able to do that. So it's, yeah, I, they, it'll, I don't see a goal fest or anything like that. Oh, it'll, be, score, it'll, be, it'll be long range point scoring at St. Brendan's. I think they'll get them over. Yeah. Now, having said that, James, there'll probably be five goals in the first half, <laughs> uh, and that happens to all of us when we make predictions. Hopefully, I'm uh, <laughs> Yeah. Um, St. Brendan's and Parnells, who do you go for? You'd have to say St. Brendan's. As poor yeah. as they were last Friday night, that has been the lowest they've been in the three games they played. They yeah. were they were much better because we we praised them in their games before that, saying like there's something about them they're moving they're moving. But last Friday night was terrible. Yeah, it was terrible. And they they have to look at themselves and say, "Geez, that was awful." But you're looking for a rebound, but it will be low scoring though. Yeah, Fanani is a big loss. They do have other forwards. Lee Moog will have to step up. He probably Maybe have to take freeze. He would. I see. I see. Shami Holland was, coming in. He was three or the three when yeah, he, he took was. over the freeze. Yeah. Good striker, like good striker. Yeah, he, he wasn't was, yeah. getting on. Maybe enough ball early on because Gary Carey played him so well. And he's very young, though. Sure, he's, like yeah, he's just out he of He has minor. to grow into that role. Maybe yeah. without Fanon this weekend, maybe they might be more focused put on him and he, 
he might respond in that kind of vein and say, yeah, geez, I'm, yeah. I'm the man now. Yeah, I'll take the freeze. I'll and stand, stand up. up. Yeah. I'll stand yeah. up. And look, yeah. you know, you'd still see St. Brendan's will have enough. But apparently, I think a low score and a fair, four or five points either way. Okay. With St. Brendan's win. John O'Dowd, um, St. Brendan seems to be the pick of the panel and it's hard to, to uh, yeah, go against I'd it. Yeah, agree, I'd agree with Aidan there. Just uh, the little doubts over Gerard O'Doherty and uh, Oshin O'Brien. Uh, we saw them work that night against Abby Dorney. When they, when they both came off, they were in a certain uh, spot of bother, the two of them. I know they've had that extra week, so they've had two weeks to try and recover. They'll need them 100%. Like They got 10 of the points in the out of the 14 against Licks now on, on the opening night between the two of them. They're massive for Tralee Parnells. Parnells didn't do themselves justice at all against Abby Dorney. Maybe it was the, the second game in a week that uh, went against them. Now they've had a, an extra week to recover, so I'd ex be expecting a much better Parnells performance. But as James said, like this is probably the best thing to happen to St. Brendan's that Fanon Egan is missing this weekend. Because in fairness, for a young lad... They were way too over-dependent on him in the first two games. It was frankly ridiculous. Yeah. There are other players that have been around for a while and they need to step up consistently yeah. on, on a long-term basis and fill the gap now left by Fanon Egan. The gap gifted left by, Hall of Dope, Fanon. Yeah, I mean, he's gifted. The gap left by Fanon Mackesy as well. There are lads there that are good enough but they haven't been doing it cons consistently. One good game, one bad game, one good game, one bad game. Now they have to turn up and I still think St. Brendan's will do enough to win. Right, so that's the weekend games. You can see them live and clubber on Friday night. Now, people are wondering about the quarter-final draw, which probably will be made after uh, the game here in the boat games finish in uh, both in Austin Stacks Park, Austin Stack Park, and also in Abbey Dorney. And cutting to the chase, um, now we know how teams get to the groups. Uh, so the winners of the preliminary quarter-finals and the top two from each group will play the quarterfinals. Extra time and winner on the day. So that's the first thing. We understand that. Now, the two preliminary quarterfinal winners and the two second place teams are drawn against group winners and one second place team. Avoid repeat pairings where possible. Now, what that scenario says is you have already uh, three teams. Ballyduff are one. Uh, Abidorni are another and Ballyhot League is there the three group winners and one of the second place teams will move up to become a seeded team and then the two preliminary winners and the two other second base teams will play them except where they're repeat pairings and because there was a two, group of four and so many uh, it was the strongest so team yeah. there's very small room for manoeuvre there just to bring it on another level the semi-finals, again, extra time in the semi-finals. Now, uh, the weekend after next, that's the weekend that Kerry are playing Armagh. That's the weekend of the quarter-finals. The semi-finals of the week after that, there's a break. And then the first Sunday of August, or whatever date it is, is the final. Now, the semi-finals, extra time. And a lot of people would know this. Avoid, again, avoid repeat pairings where possible. Maybe that may not be possible now. James... Your initial reaction to that, where you have a second place team coming up, and it could be Kilmiley could go to, as a seeded team. Yeah, that's yeah. useful. Yeah, that's useful. Wonders will never have uh, seeded. Like, but yeah, and then see, I find it hard if they're unless Crotter are the seeded team, it makes it a lot easier for the draw to be done, doesn't that? Yes, it should because then you at least you have an open you have more more yeah. more more variations. Like, yes, as it is. Yeah, like, we as you said, we could only play Kilmiley. Or belly off can only take my lyrics now. Virtually yeah, yeah. winding so down like, to that. Like, so like what's see, where's the fairness yeah. in that? You see two and stats. they can only play Crotter or Lix. Crotter, Lix, Crotter or Bell Office. So basically, it's I, it's I, from what I make out anyway. It's a very limited. Abby Dorney have to play one of Cause or Erfurt. That's it, yeah. Because if they play anyone else, there has to be a repeat pairing. There's a repeat pairing so place, elsewhere, yeah. 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 So it's yeah. kind of a very limited draw to it make. Is, like that, it is. That draw for the, the seeded second team is... I, yeah, I think that could cost yeah, a lot of headaches. And the semi final you'll talk about. They're going to have to do some mess around with yeah. the goals like, as there. You say, as you say about out. avoiding repeat pairings in the semi finals, there, it wouldn't be beyond the realms of possibility that you could have Ballyduff, Crotta, and Causeway 
in the semi-finals. Yeah. Maybe St. Brendan's. Yeah. Maybe St. Brendan's, yeah. The four, 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 I presume where, if we're a repeat pairings, can't be avoided, it's an open draw, is it? Yes. For the semi-final. Oh, yeah. yeah. Has to be yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Where possible. Yeah. So if it's yeah. not possible, so just, it's impossible. Yeah. So you do... Come on, Zach. Yeah. yeah. I think yeah. The, the quarter-final draw is enough of a headache, anyway. Yeah. That is yeah. going to be... It is right now. I think we will to come out the... The, the, the seeded second place team that makes the draw a lot easier to yeah. navigate. If, if so that's where we'd be going. Will, will you have a bet on that? Oh, right. but, I, but I think, Mort, even at this you're early right, stage, yeah. you're, you're, you're pretty you're much guaranteed, you're, you're, you're pretty much guaranteed yeah. four absolutely tasty quarterfinals. Absolutely. No matter yeah. what way you look at it, no you matter are. what way the permutations, no matter what way the draw turns point. out, yeah. there's going to be eight yeah. really competitive teams against each other. Yeah, well, it's very important to stress as well that neither Causeway or Brendan's are across the line yet. Oh, and no, Crooks course, yeah. and Nels could be in there. So we They'd make things a lot easier. Both and enough. they would make things <laughs> a lot easier for us if they did. But also so I be benefit of the four-group team that to get to a semi-final, they don't have to get through Crotter or Belly Ruff anymore. No. But, you yeah, know, two yeah. favourites of the championship yeah. and they're not in their way. So it's yeah, anyone the rest of the team. Like so that's a benefit then of being the four so you Those reckon it's unfair group. to have it or not? No, I'm not. I'm saying it's just... It's, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's unfair to mind have it or not. Hopefully this is right. the only thing we'll ever have to just, deal with just this before we, uh, Just before we finish, as we touched on last week, if, as the favourites tag says, Causeway and St. Brendan's do get through this Friday night, they will have four games under the belt before the quarterfinals. Yeah, which is I, more yeah. Than we've had two poor ones. Team, we've had two poor ones. And which could yeah, be a big difference. Ones. I mean, no offense to Crocs or Pernells there either, but no one knows no right no like, Yeah, it looks very, it. yeah, it looks very, yeah, it looks very like them. Yeah. So listen, we'll chat next week about the quarterfinal draw and the various permutations. And we'll have a look back, of course, at uh, Friday night's uh, preliminary quarterfinals. There might be a shock to report on. And uh, we'll find out, has James McCarthy's love affair with Causeway waned after he going home uh, and being told a few home truths? Or will he still have that love for his neighbours? And I can guarantee you, when James McCarthy played Causeway, there was no love at all with Causeway. There's many a Causeway man who ended up in any. No, I apologise, I don't mean that. So... That's our show for uh, this week. I'd like to thank our panel members, uh, John O'Dowd, thank you, James uh, the Maverick, uh, McCarthy, thanks very much. Again, your contribution. And Aidan, as the nerves finally kick in <laughs> as he goes to play his intermediate championship game uh, 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 with a team that has won a game since 2017. Hopefully we wish him luck tonight. And we'll report next week and do a small bit of a review on his performance <laughs> and his game. Signing off, this is Mort Murphy on behalf of Clubber TV.